you have to see it to believe it. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 actors recreated with special effects. For this list, we're looking at actors and actresses who were given jaw-dropping digital makeovers on the big screen. Whether they were made to look 30 years younger or were digitally resurrected, these examples had us questioning how much longer we'll even need live actors. Number 20. Robert Downey Jr. – Captain America Civil War Marvel fans expected to see Downey Jr. take center stage in 2016's Avenger vs. Avengers Civil War Slugfest. Try not to burn the house down before Monday. Okay, so it's Monday. That is good to know. I will plan my toga party accordingly. Still, they were left feeling like it was the 1980s again when a shockingly accurate and handsome teenage version of RDJ appeared in a family flashback scene. This scene was handled by the pros at Lola VFX that were responsible for de-aging Brad Pitt in The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. This time, instead of using a digital double as they did with Pitt, Lola VFX used Downey Jr.'s actual performance and later applied digital compositing to make him appear younger. This makes the scene even more realistic, as the movements and mannerisms are all RDJ, and not from animation software. Oh, what do we have here? Retro tech, huh? Number 19. Chris Evans, Captain America The First Avenger If you weren't totally familiar with Evans' work in the 2000s, we totally forgive you for not recognizing him as Steve Rogers in the early goings of the first Captain America movie in 2011. He looks like the before picture of a high school chess champion turned NCAA football player. Comfortable? <laughs> it's a little big. And the complete opposite of what we expect Captain America to look like. In other words, his digital transformation was an incredible success. In order to shrink Evans down to his pre-serum body size, FX teams used a digital technique that reduced Evans' actual skeletal shape to that of tiny Steve Rogers, eliminating the need for a body double and allowing Chris to act the parts himself, making the illusion all the more realistic. How'd you feel? Number 18. John Wayne, a Coors Light commercial. Two legends of war cinema, one incredible beer commercial. Yes, the Duke may have died in 1979, but he wasn't about to sit around and let his favorite beer go to waste either. Instead, he reproaches Gunnery Sergeant Hartman from Full Metal Jacket, once again played by Arlie Ermey, for blaming the presence of beer in the camp on new recruits when it's actually his ice cold brew. I want to know whose beer this is right now! It's my beer, Sergeant. And damn it, the Duke wants his beer back, and you don't say no to John Wayne. Now, while it's clear the image of Wayne had been repurposed from older film roles, it should be remembered that this commercial dropped in 1992, and considering the technology available at the time, it looks really, really good. Now, what'd you do with my pretzels? Well, don't just stand there, find the general's pretzels! Number 17, Audrey Hepburn, Gap's Keep It Simple TV ad. Gap wanted to advertise their skinny black pants, and couldn't find an actress or model better than Audrey Hepburn to do so. We're not inhibited. After all, she was the model of sophistication. Unfortunately, she'd passed away 13 years previously. After earning the permission of her estate and giving a donation to her children's fund, Gap managed, with help from a visual effects studio, to manufacture their vision of the ideal marketing campaign by lifting footage from her 1957 musical Funny Face. The girl wants to dance. The girl wants to dance. According to Gap's VP, they chose Hepburn specifically to represent the timelessness of style. Number 16. Laurence Olivier, Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow A testament to a stage and screen legacy, the producers of this diesel punk sci-fi flick decided that only Laurence Olivier had the chops to play the movie's main villain, Dr. Totenkopf. The only problem? Olivier has been dead since 1989. Hello, Doctor. Why are you doing this? I have been witness to a world consumed by hatred and bent on self-destruction. In their defense, that kind of fits the story, as his character had been dead 20 years in the film and is on screen as a hologram version of himself. We think this was a respectful way to add another film to Olivier's CV, while also putting archived BBC footage of the actor to good use. But a doomed now needs to fight for God. Number 15, Jeff Bridges, Tron Legacy. Your move, Flynn, come on. Come on. Having Jeff Bridges co-star beside a younger version of himself seems like an ambitious challenge that could have potentially failed miserably under not-so-heavy scrutiny. Regardless, it was too cool not to try in the context of a plot involving a character trapped in cyberspace for two decades with his youthful and villainous computer doppelganger. 
You seen this? To pull this off, they mapped his face and digitally recreated it based on his appearance in his 1984 film Against All Odds, occasionally pasting it onto a younger actor's body for the action sequences. I took the system to its maximum potential. I created the perfect system! Number 14, Samuel L. Jackson, Captain Marvel. File this one under this whole digital de-aging thing is getting a little too realistic. Watching a digitized Jackson doing his thing up there on the big screen, only looking 20 years younger, had us wondering what decade we were in. Excuse me, miss. You know anything about a lady blowing a hole through the roof of that blockbuster over there? Seriously, was it 2019 or 1999? Yes, advanced technology had a lot to do with it, but so did Jackson's ageless features, according to Captain Marvel co-director Ryan Fleck. I was never one to believe in aliens, but I can't unsee that. At just over 70 years of age, Jackson doesn't look a day over 50, and so his already youthful appearance greatly enhanced his digitized younger self to the point where no body double was needed. We didn't realize it until we saw Captain Marvel, but we need a young Nick Fury movie ASAP. Those bad guys still in there somewhere. <coughs> oh, mother lurking. Number 13, Gene Kelly, a Volkswagen Golf GTI TV ad. Um, why is Gene Kelly popping and locking? Because Singing in the Rain is so 1952. Actually, it's to sell the VW Golfs. B-Boy Master Elsewhere wore a prosthetic face mask along with a wetsuit to keep from freezing under artificial rain for hours on a soundstage to recreate and update one of the most famous dance scenes in cinema history. Though some viewers found the ad a little disrespectful, Kelly's estate approved it, so it is safe to enjoy. Number 12, Brad Pitt, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. Pitt's role as Benjamin Button was one of the more powerful examples of just how spectacular aging and de-aging technology would and could be in film. How old are you? Seven. But I look a lot older. Benjamin is born old and ages in reverse, so a lot of digital effects were needed. Out of the movie's 166 minute runtime, 52 of them, incredibly, do not actually feature the actor at all. That's 325 shots where special effects replaced Pitt altogether. And yet, we're still watching a Brad Pitt performance, even though it's just a computer generated version of the hunky actor's face on another actor's body for some of the scenes. Either way, it still holds up very well to this day. No wonder it took home the Best Makeup and Best Visual Effects Oscars. You are so much younger. Only on the outside. Number 11, Marlon Brando, Superman Returns. After portraying the character in the 1978 film, the late Marlon Brando reprises his role as Superman's father Jor-El in this reboot slash sequel. You do not remember me. I am Jor-El. I am your father. After negotiating with Brando's estate, director Brian Singer was able to embrace the legacy of the Christopher Reeve movie, and actually manages to show Jor-El from multiple angles and with new mouth movements thanks to CGI and extra footage from the original, which included outtakes as well as unused takes. And overall, we think the effect is super. We shall try to find the answers together. Can he see us? No, he's dead. Number 10, Marlena Dietrich, Marilyn Monroe, and Grace Kelly, J'adore Dior, the film. This commercial is so polished digitally, it's easy to miss out on the fact that three of the actresses featured in it aren't really there. But this time warp ad directed by Oscar-winning director Jean-Jacques Annault allows Charlize Theron to run into three of the most glamorous actresses in Hollywood history as she rushes for the runway. Footage of the legendary women's faces was inserted almost seamlessly into the video, including Marilyn's bold endorsement of the product. Number 9, Michael Douglas, Ant-Man. The opening moments of Ant-Man had us wondering if we had mistakenly started watching 1987's hit movie Wall Street starring a much younger Michael Douglas instead of the latest Marvel flick. Tell me that isn't what I think it is. It depends if you think it's a poor attempt to replicate my work. But it was just another example of incredible de-aging work done by famed digital specialist Lola VFX. The company used lots of Douglas's work from the 80s to sculpt and mold his then 70-year-old face to look 25 years younger. And did it ever pay off? 
Douglas looked so good that in 2018's follow-up, Ant-Man and the Wasp, his co-star Michelle Pfeiffer also underwent the de-aging process and came out looking stunning as well. Not that either of these two attractive actors ever looked bad, mind you. You mention my wife again, and I'll show you ferocity. Number 8. Brandon Lee, The Crow After Brandon Lee died on set from a gunshot accident during production, the cast and crew were so devastated they decided to finish the film in his memory. Uh, are you some kind of, of a ghost? Boo. The CGI was so meticulous that to this day, it's hard to tell which scenes feature Brandon Lee and which feature his disguised body doubles. You're him, huh? The Avenger. Brandon's father, the legendary Bruce Lee, also needed similar trickery to complete his last movie after he passed away suddenly at the age of 32. But more on that later. His son definitely got the less obvious posthumous film treatment. Listen! I'm sure you'll remember. You killed them. On Halloween. Number 7. Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, and Joe Pesci, The Irishman it's one thing to de-age Robert Downey Jr. or Chris Evans, but to knock 25 years off De Niro, Pacino, and Pesci, gentlemen all nearing the big 8-0, without the use of motion capture was a feat requiring entirely new technology. What's the problem, kid? The team at Industrial Light & Magic was up to the task after an early test on De Niro proved hopeful and then spent the next two years developing the tech that would allow the movie to be shot with a new camera rig system and without motion capture. Whether you think the end result is as good as the Marvel examples, this new way of de-aging actors is much more friendly and less invasive, which allows for greater performances from the actors themselves. I bought it up. I bought it up. <laughs> Number 6. Oliver Reed, Gladiator at a cost of roughly $3.2 million for mere minutes of material, Reed's head was masked onto another actor's body perfectly, in what may be one of the best creations of a posthumous performance for its time. Thrust this into another man's flesh, and they will applaud and love you for that. We're pretty sure you wouldn't suspect anything while watching if you didn't already know that the actor had died of a heart attack before the end of production. I was the best because the crowd loved me. When the crowd you'll win your freedom." This happened while on break from filming his scenes as Proximo, the freed slave, and the finished product was dedicated in his honor. I'm an entertainer. Number 5. Bruce Lee, Game of Death This next recreation doesn't hold up well today, but at the time, it was quite something to behold. Bruce Lee passed away suddenly in 1973 with only 100 minutes of Game of Death shot. Instead of scrapping the picture, Hong Kong production company Golden Harvest used all manner of workarounds to finish it. Sitting right there by the telephone, just waiting for you to call. Patience, that's not one of our virtues. Some of these tricks are primitive, such as a cardboard cutout of Lee's face or footage from his actual funeral, but the film still achieved critical and financial success. It also gave the world one of Lee's most iconic moments, donning the legendary black and yellow jumpsuit in a fight against Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. <laughs> Number 4. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Terminator Salvation It's brave to reanimate an actor with facial close-ups in a relatively climactic fight scene, who is too advanced in years to still be playing a killer robot at this point in the franchise. <laughs> Prosthetic face castings from his 1984 heyday as the T-800 gave the producers the exact shape and measurement needed of the action hero to create the digital makeup, while another bodybuilder's body was used as the stand-in. The backup plan if Arnie had said no? Just shoot his face off. Number 3. Paul Walker, Furious 7 if you thought Brad Pitt not actually appearing in 325 shots of Benjamin Button was a feat of technical innovation, then the recreation of Walker in his seventh Fast and Furious movie is equally impressive. Get out of the way! Walker died in 2013 before filming had wrapped, and a decision was made to complete the film using the already shot footage, supplemented by stand-ins and CGI effects. Walker's brothers were hired as stand-ins, along with actor John Brotherton, and a total of 350 CGI shots were needed to finish the late actor's role in the film. Hey, I thought you could leave without saying goodbye. Considering the team at Weta Digital didn't have any images of Walker scanned before his passing, and thus had to rely on old photos, the results are outstanding. You'll always be with me. Number 2. JFK, Richard Nixon, Elvis Presley, and John Lennon, Forrest Gump. Ma'am, you dropped your book. 
Forrest Gump's epic life story has ups, downs, and multiple encounters with celebrities, who unfortunately were not alive to help him tell his tale. Congratulations. How do you feel? I got it. Hey. <laughs> I believe he said he had to go pee. Instead, extensive visual effects were used to integrate Tom Hanks with manipulated archive footage of encounters with Presidents John F. Kennedy and Richard Nixon, and musicians Elvis Presley and John Lennon. Forrest Gump, John Lennon. Welcome home. Quite a Blue screen, rotoscoping, chroma key, and image warping, as well as voice doubles, were just some of the techniques that industrial light and magic used to bring these iconic historical characters back to life. So are you enjoying yourself in our nation's capital, young man? Yes, sir. Movie magic at its most impressive. I gotta say, that Forrest Gump one is super impressive to me for a bunch of reasons, not the least of which being that the movie came out in 1994. But number one is impressive, iconic, and it tugs at the heartstrings. So let's look at some honorable mentions, and then we'll see who tops the list of actors recreated with special effects. I'm sorry, what is your name? It's always been Junior, Clay Junior. I don't really know anymore. Hi, son. Dad, what the hell happened? You throw your back out again? Oh, I was out on the golf course. And... <sighs> Dad, I told you to watch that backswing. Nice move, Lou. You learned that in prison? Nah, that's a little trick I picked up in Benny's shooting gallery in Coney Island. And if you don't quit stalling, I'll show you some other tricks I learned in Brooklyn. I don't like that kind of talk. Now, just stop it. It upsets me. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Peter Cushing and Carrie Fisher, Rogue One, A Star Wars Story Shooting a prequel film roughly 40 years after the original movie was released makes for a whole host of issues, but none more so than in the acting department. Prepare for the jump to hyperspace and inform Lord Vader. With both the characters of Princess Leia and Grand Moff Tarkin returning in Rogue One, getting the original actors to reprise their roles would be impossible, as Fisher was no longer young and Cushing had passed away in 1994. So, in keeping with continuity, both characters were recreated using Fisher and Cushing's likeness from past Star Wars movies. Thanks to Industrial Light and Magic's efforts, the result is uncanny, and even the princess herself was impressed with the recreation of her younger self. Transmission we received. What is it they've sent us? Hope. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.